Now here's a real trip to the past. Today we'll be looking at one of the first Spongebob games I ever played. It was called Plankton's Fun House, a Flash game by Sarbakin on Nick.com. It came out in 2007, and for a lot of us, it was one of the coolest things to play online. In the story, Spongebob and Patrick are trapped in Plankton's evil fun house and need to find a way out. To do so, they need to solve a series of complicated rooms and fight through an army of Plankton zombies. Well, at least Spongebob does. I remember being a kid, browsing the internet trying to find games about my favorite TV show, and then I stumbled across this one and was super excited to play through it. I gave it a go, and ended up enduring several hours of unbridled frustration. Yeah, even though this game was popular among children, it was also notoriously difficult. Many of us would get stuck halfway through it. It doesn't even have that many stages, but the ones it does, well, they're something else. So let's relive my childhood anguish and see how this holds up. First of all, the background music is hilarious. It's been in the back of my head for many years. Whenever you move to a new screen, one of the game sprites appears for a moment. Sometimes you get really goofy ones. I should also mention that one of the biggest draws to this game was the ability to build your own level and play through ones made by other users. Sadly, it isn't really doable nowadays, but it was a really good aspect. So there are three potential goals a stage can have. Either you need to hit a switch to open the gate, find a Krabby Patty to do it, or rescue Princess Patrick from a tower by finding a key. Story mode is nine levels long, but don't worry, you'll be playing for hours regardless. You move Spongebob with the arrow keys across a board. Because of the perspective, it can be a little hard to manage at first, but you get used to it. Though sometimes I'm not facing the space I want to move to specifically enough, so Spongebob won't go to it. I also really want to see what's inside this hairspray tent. I bet it smells like Bath and Body Works in there. The first stage is really simple, but you see the sand here? Yeah, you can't push boxes on it, though they deceive you by letting you push a box on it once before it sticks where it is. You'll also have to forgive my lack of brain cells because I didn't realize this rock was pushable at first. So basically, every stage consists of pushing items around to clear a path for yourself, with added obstacles, of course. But just listen to the sound SpongeBob makes when he pushes. <laughs> <laughs> What, he had a cold, give him a break. But that's not all. He makes this funny noise whenever you select something on the menu. It sounds like he's saying SpongeBob SquarePants, but one syllable at a time. But get ready for more funny noises, because level two introduces conflict. You have to find a Krabby Patty and a bunch of Jack in the boxes. If it isn't in one, you'll get scared and lose health. <laughs> hey, SpongeBob screams like I do. For some reason, stepping on these crossed out tiles will also activate a scare. Not sure where the Jack is even coming from. You can also push these ice cubes that sometimes melt afterwards. You might also find Gary, who refills some of your health. But once you're one hit away from death, the stage won't even let you die. How very nice of it. But stage three has enemies and forces you to look through coffins to find Patrick's key. Now ghosts might jump out at you. The other enemies are called Plankto Zombies. You can find a spatula to stun them with, or a clarinet that can kill them before they hurt you. It must be the clarinet Plankton beat us with in Spongebob RPG. Okay, that's a bit of a goofy death sound. But can it possibly compete with Squidward's moan from Mrs. Puff's boating school? Uh -huh. Who's winning the Spongebob Flash game moan off? Cast your vote now. Not only that, but listen to the scream they make when they hit you. Someone was having too much fun picking out the most random sound effects for this. But then we're met with the first stage that isn't really straightforward. This one took me a moment to figure out, but when I did, I realized something about myself. I am very stupid. 
I know that isn't a surprise to anyone who's been watching me for a while, but this map looks a lot harder to figure out than it is. Just as long as you resist the temptation to push this ice cube right away, it doesn't melt this time. Oh, but this one does. I also love this zone of total death with a giant skeleton. I believe them bones are me. Next stage seems to be a sort of candy room. Or maybe a Halloween theme with a jack-o'-lantern, I don't know. It's easy to figure out as long as you avoid the zombies. Though there's this single sand space that stands out from the rest of the floor. Probably to tell you where to push the ice cube. But now here comes the massive difficulty spike. Look at this mess of a room. We must reach the funhouse storage department. You might find out the hard way that ice cubes don't work for hitting switches. You'll probably have to restart this stage a few times because of how specific you need to be with the order you push things in. One helpful note is that most of the time, with some exceptions, ice cubes will only melt if you push them on a different space than the normal floor spaces. This stage is where the run ended for a lot of children in 2007. If anything is even slightly out of sequence, you have to start over. This really reminds me of Krabby Quest, which reminds me of Wonderland. But if you're able to push on through, you'll be met with a slightly easier stage to serve as a break. You do have to be a little smart about how you use this rock, though. But then stage 8 is the real game ender. Almost the entire stage is ice, and every move counts. You have to really take your time and analyze every possible move before you send yourself skating all over the place. You can be super close to finishing, but then make one mistake and have to start over. I hope you remember what you did to reach that point, because you'll have to replicate it. If you made it this far, this could very well be where your journey ends. Will you ever see the final level, or can you only imagine what it could possibly be? But with a stage this difficult, you have to wonder how hard the next one will be. I bet the final stage will just outright be impossible. Just a completely unbeatable stage meant to confuse and frustrate you. And it's extremely easy. You just kinda skate to the Krabby Patty, then to the finish. The zombies don't even hurt you when you're mid-skate. You know what? Good. I'm glad it's this easy. Then when you win, it tells you to do it again, but with only a bubble wand as a weapon. Hey, don't even joke about that. I've had enough ice skating to last a lifetime. So that does it for this game. After all that tireless frustration, we've finally beaten it. Now going through this again as an adult, I won't deny that certain stages are especially difficult. But some of them are easier to figure out than I remember them being. It's more like there are a few really hard parts that end up defining the game's difficulty. You really have to think, you can't just blindly run through these. Some instances may be really hard, but you'll feel really accomplished when you win it. I mean, you don't get much in the way of an ending, but you can tell all your friends that you beat Plankton's Funhouse. You can tell them that even if you didn't, how are they gonna know? But you can give this a go if you want to challenge yourself, and maybe increase your ability to strategize. Though if you want to do that with Spongebob, I recommend Atlantis Squarepantis Square Off. Because as we all know, there's no better way to improve your brain power than to play a Spongebob game. Thank you for joining me, I will see you in the next memory.